I work with kids and helping them to become good people. That's essentially like what I say. And then people ask me like, well, what exactly do you do? And I say, I teach wellness. And they say, so you're like a gym teacher. And I say, well, that's one aspect of wellness. That's the physical aspect. And it's extremely important when we go to the doctor. That's the one thing that they tell us how to exercise and eat a little bit better. Uh, but they never really tell us about how to handle our emotions effectively, um, how to socialize uh, in a positive manner, um, how to show empathy for one another. And those are really the things that I get to focus on in my class. They've developed this internal compass of what helps their wellness and what hinders their wellness. So through their work with Vanessa, our PE teacher, and Brian, our wellness teacher, and actually all their teachers, because it's just kind of a common language here. Kids know what's good for them and know what's not good for them. The wellness wheel, when I started out, that was really the driving force behind the units. Okay, there are six aspects of wellness on the wellness wheel, and we have six units throughout the year. And as we went on with the year, we started to realize as a class that these aspects of wellness don't stand alone. They actually uh, are all very, very closely related. And so we realized that it becomes impossible to focus on one aspect of wellness without it having an impact or an effect on the other aspects of wellness. And that shift has led to um, units that are more theme-based that touch on different aspects of wellness at the same time. Why is going from one school to another a transitional change? Um, oh, yeah. um, well, it's like you're leaving the old for the new. Yes. Sometimes it wasn't your choice to transfer to another school, mm -hmm. so, then you're, so then you get mad at your parents. Huh. Did everyone get a chance to hear that? So the answer is sometimes we transfer schools and we don't always make that choice ourselves. Maybe you were very comfortable in the school where you were at. Maybe you had a lot of friends, right? You were used to it. You were in a very, very good place, in a place that you consider to be safe, in a place where there's learning that's happening. This unit, the name of this unit for wellness is called Planning for Wellness. And essentially what uh, students are doing is they are learning about the kinds of changes that we go through throughout our lives, the changes that are just going to occur naturally um, as a result of our natural development, um, the changes that we decide to implement ourselves when we want to make, um, when we choose to change in any one aspect, and then the transformational change, which is what happens as a result of these developmental and transitional changes. We are talking about changes, um, how like something changes to one place to another. We were drawing our in our notebooks and telling our teacher, Mr. Soto, how to like what changes we've done today, and then we had to draw or just do sentences and color them. Is that a positive or a negative change? It depends how you take it. Excellent. It always depends on how we take it, right? Um, Fabian, maybe you didn't have a choice in transferring schools, but do you have a choice in the attitude that you take towards that change? Yes. Does he? Yeah. Beautiful. They get to see a transformational change by the end, and in describing how they got there, they can talk about how their developmental changes affected that and how their transitional changes um, uh, were selected to get to that place. It helps to make sure that we're tying in and we're focusing on the whole child, especially in the wellness department where people automatically assume it's just physical. Um, so with the wellness wheel, we're able to tie in pretty much every aspect that you can think of, intellectual, physical, environmental. We're tying in all of these things um, under one umbrella. work with the IB program. So we have different um, IB traits. So risk, being a risk taker, being, uh, which is one of, I use a lot in my class. Basically using all of the IB traits to encourage students, being principal, to encur encourage students to get out there and become this boisterous person. 
Um, I know that's what I use. And I think for the most part, the, ent the entire community, AGC community uses the IB traits to incorporate that into helping students um, feel comfortable with using their voice here. Ball. With your group, the goal that you're nearest that you drop the ball at is the exercise you're going to do. You will do 10. How many? 10. 10. Yes. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10 of that exercise. Okay, you guys, I'm asking you to be principal. I'm not going to stop you like, hey, I saw you drop the ball. Stop at that goal. So make sure you guys are being principal, right? Our three IV traits we've been focusing on, that's what I want you to focus on at this moment. All right? When the horn is We have Coach Vanessa who focuses on physical education and so her class is very like movement based, um, but at the same time, they're learning a lot of these wellness concepts uh, by playing fair with each other and practicing integrity and being principled uh, in the middle of games and then having discussions about how um, behaving in a principled manner actually keeps the game fun. And what would happen if we were just being dishonest and unprincipled with each other? How would that affect the game? And so they get to do some reflecting um, of things like those in that class. And uh, a lot of that also like pushes our our lessons and like drives our lessons in in the classroom setting. What are some things that might slow us down? Do you guys think? Danielle? Um, people, people dropping the ball. That might slow us down. What else? Because people trying to do like really cool moves. Like, because like some, some time, last time the person who walked over there and they were still trying to move. Okay. Like, <laughs> okay, so maybe we're being a little bit too fancy. All right, so this time too, we've got to make sure we keep the pattern. So if we do drop the ball, you just pick it back up. So specifically right now, um, a lot of the things that we're doing, it's all working towards like positive peer pressure, but then also doing some goal setting in the beginning of class. So they have to collaborate as a whole class, but they have to collaborate in small groups. So an activity we're doing right now, I call it pass the hat. They have a ball. They stand in a single file line. They're trying to pass the ball back all the way to the end of the line as they're walking around a track or jogging around a track. And once it makes it to the end of the line, the student at the end has to run to the front. And so the goal is for the ball not to drop. Um, if they drop a ball, the cone that it lands near, there's some exercises or an exercise challenge underneath it. And the, as a class, they have to complete that challenge. Um, the goal is to complete it in four minutes, the actual like passing of the ball in four minutes or less. But every time the ball drops, they stop the timer. Um, so they've, it's really been awesome to see them encouraging each other, focusing on um, communication. What do you think we can do differently that helps you to stop? We're consistent at 58, but what can happen differently? Yes. Maybe you stay a little bit closer together. What else? Tell us. Same thing. Anything else you guys are noticing that's happening? Talk. Okay, so maybe we're throwing it up too wide, taking a lot of time, right? In third grade today, we just did that challenge, and they were like, okay, here's what's happening, and here's what we need to do in order to beat our time from the last time. Um, they're like, where some people aren't paying attention and they're not being focused or other students are goofing around when we're jogging around. They're paying attention more to the music than paying attention to the person in front of them. And then they were able to problem solve and work as a team. And they accomplished their goal by the end of class today, which was really powerful and awesome to see. Moviditos. It's called Go Noodle. Um, teachers create their accounts, and then uh, I have one account for each of my different groups. And I actually use Go Noodle with uh, third grade, but I also use it with eighth grade. Um, so one of the things that I do with the older ones is I actually like participate with them, and I say, "Look, guys, I'm an adult, and if I can get silly." you guys can get silly. So we tend to either begin or end our classes with some go noodle, and it's usually something uh, physical. And I usually make the call um, after I get a read for the mood of the classroom. So if we're coming in a little tired and not ready to be engaged, then we'll do a quick movement activity to kind of get us up, drink some water, come back, let's get to learning. If we're coming and we're ready to start, then we do that, and then we save it for the end, and then that's a nice way of like transitioning into our next class.
I think that oftentimes transitions can be confusing to students. It can be a big deal for certain students to go from from one space to another and know that you have to keep track of your materials and know that there's a different personality that is going to be teaching the next class. Um, so <clears throat> meditation is a good way of grounding all of the students and really prepping them and talking them through what's about to happen next. Instead of it being just kind of chaotic and we did all this movement and like there can almost be a sense of confusion with so much movement happening happening all at once where meditating allows even my voice to go down to be able to speak more slowly and more clearly and that gives students like a safe way to transition on their own. Welcome to this five minute meditation on loving kindness. The loving kindness practice is a method of developing feelings of warmth, compassion, and love towards the self and others. To start, find a comfortable position, upright yet relaxed. Allow your arms to rest gently and close your eyes. Bring your awareness to the breath. As you breathe in, be aware of breathing in. And as you breathe out, be aware of breathing out. Just bring full awareness to the act of breathing, allowing the breath to be natural and easy. exercise will teach you how to turn high stressful energy off so that you can do what you need to do to be your best self. Close your eyes and listen or keep them open and follow along. Remember, you are in control of your body. We had some third graders come to me and they were committed to problem solving and they thought that the first problem they should take on would be environmental problems. So we talked about how they would do that, and they said the first thing we want to do is get rid of the trash around school. So okay, so it gave them gloves and compostable garbage bags, and then they came in from recess yesterday with four garbage bags, like, okay, so we each got a point for ourselves, because they made up a point system. <laughs> um, and so now tomorrow we're going to get more garbage. And did you know there were 60 cigarette butts out there? Because we counted them. That is not good, Miss Moore. What I like about it is that it's not like normal schools. And instead of any other school's goal, um, our, our goal is to have a healthy planet. We worked with studio, studio gang architects. We gave them this challenge of creating this project, something that's never been done before. So it's an incredibly innovative, incredibly exciting opportunity, and also working with Roseanne Bosch. The design of this building was based off on the, the, the environment as the third teacher, but the culture and, and community is responsive to the environment it sets. So there's some key aspects of the building that help that embed the philosophies that we uphold as a community. Many of our children have never seen greenhouses. We, we are proposing to have 200 chickens, um, the chickens that we have over at 47th Street. The, the joy that the children have and just the fun. It's so fun to watch these chickens walking around the school um, and, and seeing the children growing up in urban environments that never, haven't had access to natural environment in this way, um, it really opens up their minds and we want them to ask questions, we want them to dig deeper, we want them to be curious about their world around them and we see that this is a innovative building that's going to help them do that. We um, take earthworms and we um, put newspaper in and we spray it with um, a few sprays of water and then we chop up bananas and feed them and give them coffee grounds. And when they go to the bathroom, they make a compost that's really strong. So by the end of the year, we can help everyone around us grow 
things that we might need because we need trees and plants to live with air and that compost can help us make really strong trees to make a healthy environment. These are like the coffee grounds um, and if you can look underneath there should be there's a little one. Where we get the coffee ground is from the office. So, like, from the office, if they don't want to use that type of coffee ground, what they do is they just put it in a plastic bag, and then we get it to the ground. These are earthworms. They usually go on the bottom because that's where a lot of dirt is down here. The newspaper is to keep it moist. Even last year, um, our Unit 5, which is the next unit that's coming up, it was just called Environmental Wellness. It's an aspect of wellness on the wellness wheel. But this time, uh, I'm going to call it Mother Earth, and it's going to be environmental wellness focused. But at the same time, we're learning about um, how have different cultures throughout time uh, looked at and respected Mother Earth. So, like, how has that relationship changed over time and throughout different cultures, right? And so we get to learning about respect and we get to learning about recycling at the same time. Water the plants. Oh, we can't water the plants too much. So what we do is we water it until it gets full of plant weight. We go water the other plants. All the ones that are dry. The reason why we think it's good to have plants is to make more air and to make the environment healthier. And it also gives you a nice, calming, happy, like, feeling. A lot of times, if I have anxiety for math, my teacher would send me out to go here so I can water the plants, which makes me feel better. But we can't water them too much because then they will overflow. The autonomy that we as a charter feel allows us to support our teachers in being autonomous. And that was a big reason that I came to AGC because I was trusted as a professional to make the decisions that I felt needed to be made for my students. There is a can-do mindset across the board. So everything from the students, to the teachers, to the support staff, to the leadership, to the board of directors. And where we see innovation being incredibly important is we have the ability to spark an idea and then just figure out how we're going to make it work. It sparked that my ability to create like the personal best days and have it be student focused and an individual plan for each student. Um, I know that in some schools there's like benchmarks that students are supposed to hit each grade level and if they don't hit it they get you know docked their points in PE and I think that's really unfortunate. Um, it sort of pushes them away from being active. So I think the autonomy has really been able, allowed me to teach students to be healthy learners for life. I love coming into the building and all of the students are like, good morning, Miss Neely. When I'm leaving, bye, Miss Neely. And then they, they love me, I love them, and then the energy that we feed off of each other. And that's what I absolutely love about coming to work. Their goal is to help people understand the learning more than like other teachers in other schools. They are focused on just making kids memorize. And by learning about what we're doing, it gets you really ready to understand about the environment and a lot of healthy things. That attitude, that like eagerness to learn, rubs off in the morning. I'm not gonna lie, you know, there are times when I, I show up and maybe it was a rough weekend, maybe it was like, it was just a, a rough day. Um, a, a myriad of things can happen um, that'll, that can affect our mood. And there have been times when I come in and I'll see like a smiling face. And I say, hey, Mr. Soto, what are we learning today? And immediately I have to get into this um, ideal wellness educator role where I'm like, ah, Okay, what do we learn? What are we doing? What's coming up next? This is what we're doing today. And that puts me into that mentality immediately. And after that, it's like, it's go time. <laughs> so it, I really feed off of the energy of the students. Really, really. Do.